Hey everyone, this is Mr. Wistar again. In this lesson, which is the first one from Chapter 5, we're going to talk about how to use if statements to start writing programs that can have conditional execution in them. We're going to talk about what it means to have conditional execution, and then we're going to talk about the syntax of if, and also a little bit about how to write uh, Boolean conditions. Um, we'll talk about some strategies for using if and else statements effectively, and then lastly, we'll just talk briefly about what is considered good style when you start using if and else statements. So, what's conditional execution? Well, conditional execution just means that your program can behave differently based on what has been happening up to that point. Um, it allows your program to make a choice about what to do and you not having to have to predict ahead of time exactly what steps the program is going to need to follow. And it makes our programs a lot more powerful and flexible because they can react and respond appropriately to a lot more different situations. So just as an example, um, you know, uh, depending on what day of the week it is, I have to decide whether to go to class or not. Notice the language I'm using there. Whether, if, depending. Those are all natural language terms which suggest the need for conditional execution. So in this case, uh, just hypothetically speaking, if we translate this into syntax, we might get something like that. If get day dot equals Sunday, um, so if today is Sunday, then I can sleep in, or else I have to go to class. Now, more um, specifically, if you take a look at the uh, syntax structure of an if-else statement, what you have is you have uh, the keyword if, and then in parentheses you have a Boolean condition to test, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then you have a set of curly braces, and that's very important. And inside the curly braces, uh, what you need to put is all of the statements that should run if that Boolean condition is true. You can have as many or as few statements inside the curly braces here as you want. And you can do anything inside the curly braces that you would normally be able to do inside of a method. And then after the first set of curly braces you have the keyword else and another set of curly braces and another set of code. And the else um, condition um, is the part of your program that runs if the boolean test turns out to be false. So if the test is true you do what's inside the first set of curly braces. If the test is false you do what's in the second set of curly braces. So uh, it's useful to know that you're not required to put anything inside the else. And actually, you're not even required to have the else. If you have a Boolean condition where there's nothing to do, um, or if you have a, sorry, an if else um, conditional where there's nothing to do if the Boolean test is false, then you can just leave the else out. Um, for example, here, if it's raining, I should take my umbrella outside. If it's not raining, I don't really have to do anything different, so I might as well just forget about that part. Okay, as far as Boolean tests go, we're going to have a, a whole lesson just devoted to writing effective Boolean tests. We're going to have a couple, actually. So I don't want to get into all the specifics for now. But just understand that when we say a Boolean test, what we mean is some sort of condition which evaluates to either true or false. Um, it can't be processed if it's any other kind of value. So if you just take a look at a couple of examples here, less than um, is a test which always evaluates to true or false. Um, there are several methods out there that will also produce values that are true or false. Um, and then there are lots of methods and lots of processes that don't evaluate to true or false. If you call substring, that returns a string. That's not true or false. If you call length, that returns an int. That's not true or false. And you'll know because you'll get a syntax error if you try to use a non-Boolean test um, or a non-Boolean expression inside the parentheses. Okay, a couple of helpful tips um, so that you can write effective if-else statements. Uh, the first one would be make sure that you don't put a semicolon after the parentheses for your Boolean test. That's a really easy mistake to make and unfortunately your program will actually compile if you do that but it will behave very bizarrely and it's a really hard error to find. So just remember semicolons go after action statements 
not after Boolean conditions. So don't use them after your Boolean test in an if statement. The second point is a little more complicated, but it's really important. It says here, make sure that if else choices are mutually exclusive and exhaustive. So the first part, mutually exclusive, make sure that it's never possible that both um, your Boolean condition um, could be true or potentially false. Or make sure that you don't ever have two alternatives um, that could both be true for a test. Um, and this will become a little bit more important when we start writing Boolean um, or conditional blocks that have uh, more than two alternatives. But just make sure that what you're writing um, is very clearly defined, the difference between the true and false condition. And that's also what we mean when we talk about exhaustive. Um, remember that the else is going to run every time that the if condition is, fal is false. And so you better make sure that you always want that code to run. Sometimes you can make the mistake of assuming that if the if, is, if, the if statement isn't true, then I always want to do what happens if it's false. But there are some conditions that are not exhaustive. So if you think back to our early example, if we had written it so that we said, um, if the day of the week is Monday, or it's Tuesday, or it's Wednesday, or it's Thursday, or it's Friday, um, then I need to go to class, else I can sleep in. Well, that's a mistake, right? Because here at Hotchkiss, if it's Saturday, you also have to sleep in, or so you also have to go to class. So your else block would then be behaving incorrectly. Um, and so you better make sure that the else only runs if every other possible alternative including what's in the parentheses for the if, is false. So the last thing is, I would say, when you're trying to figure out what to do and how to structure your conditional um, block, just ask yourself, well, how many different alternatives are there for this test that I'm doing? Uh, and the answer should always be either there's one alternative, um, in which case you don't need to use an else at all. There's two alternatives, in which case you need to use if, and else. Um, and then there's a possibility that there could be more than two alternatives. Um, if you're trying to, say, write a program to calculate your letter grade based on your average, there's uh, five or six alternatives. And we're going to have a, another lesson in the future talking about how to do that. So just ask yourself how many alternatives are there to the question that I'm trying to ask. Um, last part has to do with good style, and it's really important that you have good style for your if statements so that they make this part of your program easy to read and understand. And the, probably the most important part of that is that you indent the code inside of each set of curly braces. Just like every other set of curly braces that we've used so far, you have to indent the code inside of your if and inside of your else. Another important part is to make sure that both, set, both curly braces in a set of curly braces line up vertically under the if. There are some people who think you should put the opening curly brace on the same line as your Boolean condition. And I think that's a big mistake because I think if you don't see both sets of, if you don't see both curly braces in a pair lining up, then it's easy to forget one of them or both of them. Last part is, or sorry, the next part is to make sure to use curly braces all the time. Even if you only have one thing to do inside the curly braces, you should still use curly braces. Um, it's too easy to create errors in your program if you forget to use um, curly braces. Last part, which we'll take a look at in a minute, is more of just sort of an option. Um, but some programmers like to write a very short comment um, using the slash slash um, style right after the word else to summarize what that means. Um, it's not essential. Um, it's not a requirement in this class, but you might find, especially if you start writing pretty long if and else blocks, you might find that you need to just remind yourself what it means if you got yourself into the else. So let's take a look at an example of all of that. Um, here I've got a program that if I run it, um, it asks me to type in a number, and then the big question is, is this number even or odd? Well, um, in the past, we wouldn't really be able to make our program uh, print out different values depending on what the user typed in because we had no way of doing conditional execution. But 
we're going to change that. We're going to actually write a condition that tests to see if the number is even or odd and then behaves differently. So let's go over kind of the basic structure. We need to start with if. We'll fill this in in a minute. Let's have a set of curly braces. Now remember, the question that we were going to ask is how many alternatives are there in this decision? Is there one? Is there two? Or is there more than two? In this case, there's only two because it's going to be even or odd. And if there's two, that tells us that we need to have if and we need to have else. So let's see. We'll say that the if condition is going to be if the number is even. And the way that you tell if a number is even is if, it, um, if you can divide two into it evenly. What does it mean to divide a number in evenly? It means that the remainder of that division is zero. And how do we find out the remainder? We do that with the percent sign. So if I want to find out if num is even, what I really need to find out is if the remainder of dividing it by 2 equals 0. So if that's the case, that tells me that the number is even. So I'm going to print out it's even. Now, if that test is false, if the remainder turned out to be 1, then that tells us that the number is odd. So in the else, we can put that. Now the point I was making before about that last style point where you can write a comment explaining what the else case means, what I mean by that is a lot of programmers will come up here and do this. Now in this case, I would probably consider that to be kind of redundant because you're about to print out a statement that says exactly the same thing. But in a more complicated example, it might be really helpful to just explicitly write out what the else block means. Again, it's not a requirement, but it might be helpful. Okay, so let's compile and run that. 42, hey, it's even, because this Boolean condition was true, so we did what was in the curly braces underneath if. If we run it again with an odd number, hey, print out is odd because this was false, so we jumped down to here, and then we did what was inside of the else curly braces. Okay, so in this lesson, we talked about the idea of conditional execution, we talked about the syntax of if-else statements, and some tips for deciding um, how and what you need to write for that. Uh, we talked very briefly about what a Boolean expression is, and then we talked about some good style for if-else statements. Okay, you're all set.